Hello, in this presentation we will discuss the discussion question of compare general ledger and chart of accounts. If we have an essay question such as this, such as a comparison between two items, one way to approach this type of essay question would be to first uh, define the two items and then go through and list the similarities and the differences between those two items. So we're considering the general ledger and the chart of accounts. These are two items that can often be confused when first learning the process and so we want to keep them uh, different or differentiated in our minds. When we're considering, I'll look at the chart of accounts first because it's pretty much self-explanatory. When we look at the chart of accounts, we have a chart of accounts. So we're going to list the accounts that will be involved. Now note that that's different. The chart of accounts is different than just saying assets, liabilities, equity, and possibly income and expense. We're going to have to list the actual accounts within, uh, within those categories. But in essence, if we were just to define it, we're going to have a, a list of accounts that are going to be used within the accounting process uh, for the business. The general ledger then is going to be a bit different in that we're still going to have those accounts, but we're going to use the general ledger in order to record the transactions to those specific accounts. So the GL will, will show the detail of the accounts. We're going to have all the accounts and they will then be used in order to list the detail. So if we got into a bit more detail and we tried to compare and contrast these two, the chart of accounts and the general ledger, note that the chart of accounts does not necessarily have any balances with it. We're just going to have a list of the accounts, possibly, uh, no, possibly have account numbers depending on whether the, uh, whether the company uses account numbers. That doesn't mean the balance in the account when I say account numbers. We're talking about numbers that would then be assigned to the account so that we can list the accounts not by name but by number. If the balances were included, then we'd basically have a trial balance, which is something different. So we're not talking about a trial balance, meaning we're not including basically the balances when we're just having the list of accounts. The main purpose of the chart of accounts is that we can have this list of accounts in order to help us record journal entries. So many times if you're looking at accounting problems, they're going to give you just a list of accounts. And that's going to be used in order to construct uh, whatever journal entries that we are making. Note, in real life, unlike many problems, however, the chart of accounts will always be in the same order. And the, all the, the general ledger will be in the same order, the trial balance will be in the same order. That order then is the assets first, and then the liabilities, and then the equity, and then the income, and then the expenses. It's always going to be, it's always going to be in that order. Even if you have account numbers, it's always going to be in that order first. If, they, um, if something asks whether it's going to be in the chart of accounts is in order of alphabetical order, no. Is it in order of chart of account number? No. Uh, the account number should be structured in such a way that they follow the order of assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses. But if they are not, if the account numbers are put in incorrectly, then they will be out of order because most software will put the uh, chart of accounts first and primarily in order by account type, asset, liability, equity, income, and expense. That list of accounts then can be used in order to construct any types of journal entries that we have. Now if the company does have account numbers, note that the account numbers will typically be uh, somewhat different as they go from category to category, meaning assets might start with a one and have like four numbers. So you might start with 10 or one zero 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 and then one one zero zero zero. And we're typically going to leave some space between the account numbers in case we have some other accounts that we want to later on put in between them and we don't want to have the account numbers be out of order. Then uh, the, the 200s then, I mean the liabilities then, we might go from starting from a 1000 to the 2000s, 2000, 2020, 2030 or something like that. Then the equity being the 3000s the the uh, revenue being the four thousands and so on and expenses being the five thousands and that would be that would be one way to construct the account numbers so that we can then easily look at the account number and know what type of account it is just by whether it starts with a one two three four or five within the account number the general ledger by contrast will have the same order it'll have the same account numbers but it'll be generally a lot larger and a lot more difficult to look at because the general ledger is typically going to have all the detail of the of each transactions within 
the account. So we're kind of skipping over from the chart of accounts. You might want, you might compare that to like a trial balance, which basically adds the balances. We're going to the general ledger, which adds not only the ending balances, but also the detail. So whatever time period we are looking at, if it's a, if it's a month or a year, then we'll have the detail, the debits and credits, the increases and decreases to each individual account within uh, the general ledger. Those ending balances then in each individual account are those amounts that will then be used to construct the trial balance. So we're gonna have the accounts in there. If we were to add up the debits and credits for all the general ledger accounts, the ending balances, they would be in balance. We typically do this, but we do this by constructing a uh, trial balance to do that and list out those accounts and make sure they are in balance. So in recap, then the chart of accounts is just basically gonna be a list of accounts, may have account numbers, but it's just gonna be a list. It will be in order typically. Uh, and then the general ledger will have the same order. It will have the same accounts, but it's going to give a lot more detail. It's going to give the it's going to give the detail of the transactions for whatever time period we ran the report for, and it will have the ending balances, the sum of all the debits and credits from the ending balances. That is what you is used to create the trial balance. The trial balance then having an equal number of debits and credits.